Voice, we welcome Montrez Harrell to the show. Thanks for being here. I'm sure it's been a long couple of days. How you doing? Doing good. Doing good. How are you? I'm doing great. So happy to have you. When you hear Montrez Harrell of the Los Angeles Lakers, how does that sound? Uh, it's got a great ring to it, sounds like to me. <laughs> you ever picture yourself in that purple and gold? Because it's here. Uh, I, I got a couple of edits that's been done. Uh, <laughs> a lot of people that do animations for me have been doing, doing some great jobs for me. <laughs> I know. Isn't Twitter and social media great? Like, the minute you signed, there was, like, you in a jersey. It was pretty awesome. Man, for, photo uh, shopping and editor now is crazy. <laughs> so, Trez, can you share what went into your decision to potentially pass up more money to play in another city or, or, or to leave the Clippers where you had so much success to join the Lakers? Uh you know, my choice uh, was really just, uh, you know, from my inner circle, uh, my family, uh, you know, just talking and looking over the decisions that we had on the table. Um, and we just felt like uh, just coming playing the purple and gold was the best choice. And, uh, you know, I definitely felt like it was the best choice for me. So that's what we went with. And, you know, I'm happy to be elected. From the moment the season ended, were you talking with your family and your inner circle about the next step? No, no. As soon as the season ended, um, I actually went home and, and took the time to actually grieve and, and be with my family and actually uh, mourn the loss, uh, loss of my grandmother. Um, and then after that, um, I just be, was being a dad um, as I'm continuously still doing, man. Um, that's all I was doing, just being around my kids and, and just that love and that energy. Um, that's all I've been doing. And, and when free agency came about, that's when, uh, you know, I started getting into the talks um, with my agent. But, you know, I... I left the basketball to, you know, what I've done and uh, what I've produced and left out there. And that's all I could do. Yeah, thoughts and prayers to you and your family. I know you lost your grandmother in July while you were in Orlando. Uh, what did she mean to you? Um, everything. Um, everything in the entire world. Um, I still uh, have multiple, you know, pieces with her. Um, everything that I do is, um, you know, going to praise her name um, and, you know, continue to take care of my family and my loved ones I've been doing, um, you know, since I was 16, 17. And um, it's still tough to this day. Um, wow. But, you know, it's, it's still going to be one of those, um, you know, growing processes, one of those things that I'm going to have to take one day at a time. Yeah, I appreciate you sharing that. And there's no question she's uh, very, very proud of you. Now we transition to basketball. You know, how excited are you for this opportunity to play with LeBron James, an, an all-time great? Uh, I'm extremely and, uh, you know, really, really uh, honored um, once. And, you know, I'm ready to get going. Honestly, man, I can't wait for training camp to kick off. And, you know, actually, you know, throw that practice judge on there and we go in there and, and get to work, really. Trez, how many times have you visualized running that high pick and roll with Braun over the last couple of days? Man, I, I've <laughs> been visioning high pick and rolls, uh, baseline plays, uh, all of it, lives, everything, man, um, you know. Uh, like I said, I'm just ready to get going, man. This, this is a great feeling, and I'm just, you know, happy to be here. I hear you on that. Listen, so you play against Anthony Davis these past five years. He's in New Orleans and then L.A., played him four times last year, to now playing with the game's most versatile big. What do you envision that looking like, and how does your game complement his? Like I said, it, I'm just doing anything and everything I can to help complement these guys. But they already do well, man. They, they've already shown and proven that they can win a championship um, without the, you know, pieces that we've added this year. Uh, so I'm just coming in looking to do anything I can to compliment that chemistry that these guys already have built. Trez, we're a Laker set here, and even we were unanimous in voting you sixth man of the year. So you're coming off an incredible season. You're winning that award, and, and you've always been a let my work speak for itself kind of player. But what did this award mean to you personally when you really sat back and thought about it? Um... It's kind of one of those funny situations. Um, it's, it's kind of one of those things that it, it kind of uh, it kind of hurts a little bit, uh, just because uh, I lost my grandmother, and we kind of had these talks, um, you know, before losing her. Um, so it, it's one of those things that kind of kind of hurts and stings. Um, but at the same time, it, it just made me, you know, change my mindset and and to be even one of those players that still working you know, how they take approach to the game is going to, you know, enhance even more and just speak even more for itself. Um, you know, that's that's what I've always been known for. And that's always what, you know, people have, um, you know, first said is how hard it works. And I'm just going to take that to a whole 
a extremely different level. Um, it's, it's, it's definitely one of those things that still hurt me to this day, um, not being able to, you know, take that trophy home and show it to my grandmother. You know, your game's evolved every single year. How driven are you to continue to improve? Um, still, continuously every day. Um, I am got another one or two workouts uh, set for today. Um, so, you know, this game is continuously changing. Um, and, you know, I don't want to be one of those players that, you know, that label ask can only do this one thing because it, once you get that label, it's pretty hard to get off of you. And now it, it's, it cuts you you know, in half as a player, you know, no matter what. And I never wanted to be looked at as one of those players coming into this game. I want to, you know, always look at myself as a person that, you know, can do multiple things in this game. Uh, we'll never ask, uh, we'll never need it. Um, that's, what, that's the way I always approach the game, that's the way I always look at my game. And, you know, the things that I do well, you know, I enhance those things, but the things that I don't do well, I work uh, extremely hard on two, three times harder than what I already do well. Graz, last thing, and I got to be honest, uh, if that's okay with you, you were always a player that drove us Laker fans absolutely crazy because of how hard and how well you played against them every damn time. Uh, right. It would be like, I, I can't stand Trez, but man, I'd love him in a Laker uniform. And then when the signing was announced, Laker Twitter goes nuts. It celebrates. I, I know how excited Laker fans are. What message do you have for Laker Nation? Well, all the only message that I have is, you know, now you, you guys don't have to hate me. Now you can love me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, it was, it was always a lot of love. Just so much respect. Yes, sir. <laughs> all right, all right. Thank you so much. All right, Trez. Uh, so happy to have you, and thank you for taking the time. Really appreciate it, and uh, hope to see you soon. Oh, no. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you.